I think it's time that we discuss what's better, an LPVO on top of your AR or, or a good quality red dot. Let's dig right in to which one is better, which one you need, and why. So have you thought about which you should put on top of your AR? Should you get a low power variable optic like this Burris or maybe like this Night Force or maybe like this beautiful Steiner? Or should you just get an Aimpoint or an EOTech or something like that? And should you spend the money on something like an Aimpoint? Or can you get away with something as simple as one of the import budget like this SIG dots and maybe a magnifier? Geez, there's so many things to think about. Which one should you do and why? Well, let's dig right into it. As per usual with Carry Trainer, I want to start with this. What is my goal? What's my desired end state? What do I want out of it? Right? If I go to buy a truck, what do I need? Do I want a super cool truck with 700 horsepower that I can do burnouts in? Or do I want a truck that I can fit in tight parking spaces with and maybe throw a few bags of mulch in so I can get a compact truck? Or do I need to pull a fifth wheel with it? Do I need a very large dually diesel, right? What's my goal? What do I need? That being said, why not just go to this place? Why don't we just get a big, beautiful center fire rifle like this with a badass long boy Steiner on it and just get it done? Why can't I just do this? Or even better, why don't I just do this? Why don't I just have a custom bolt gun built with a beautiful optic like this Vortex on here? And I'll go have my buddy Rod build you all one. Nice defiance action, because you can just do this, right? Well, I think you know the answer. This is for something else, right? That's for something different. This is for something different than, say this, right? An everyday kind of a carbine. Beautiful Radian topped with an aim point. You're going to see a theme here. Thousands of rounds through this gun. Tens of thousands of rounds through this gun. This isn't a pitch for Radian, but I might as well add it. They didn't ask me to. They didn't pay me to do this video. The finest out-of-the-box ARs that I could recommend. If somebody asks me, I always tell them get a Radian because they work. Because they are sub-MOA guns out of the box. Because they are built to very tight tolerances because they last, uh, and they're good people. They're great uh, business, uh, awesome dudes. I stop out there every year or two to their facility and say hi and visit with the folks. But this gun, this little shorty, is gonna do something completely different than those long rifles, right? I'm gonna extract less speed out of that bullet. Thus, that bullet is going to have less downrange energy, downrange efficacy, downrange effect. So we could say this is for closer up, but how far? What can you do with this? How far do you think that I could lay down in the dirt without time uh, as a component where I could just figure it out, figure out my distances? How far could I hit something that was say 20 inches tall? 200 yards? 300 yards, no magnification, just the one by 400 yards, 500. How about 800? How about 900? I've been good out to 850, 900 yards on a good day uh, where my vision's feeling sharp and where the wind's not crazy. And I can ring that steel out there eight to 900 yards away. On any given day, five to 600 yards with this setup with good ammo, I shoot Supervel ammunition, uh, which we can talk about in another video is completely possible. Now, that is going to be contingent upon a few things. We're talking optics here, but the optic is only going to help you do things that the rifle is capable of. So just a quick sidebar. We hear people say that's a sub-minute gun or a sub-MOA gun. What does that mean? Well, we know that a minute of angle measures a slightly over one inch at 100 yards. So if somebody says that they have a sub minute or sub MOA gun, they are saying that their gun is capable of shooting groups below one inch at 100 yards or below two inches at two or three inches, give or take. It's slightly larger than three uh, at 300 yards. So if somebody's got a five minute gun, which is very common. That means that their gun is only capable of making a five inch group 
at 100 yards, which isn't terrible for a carbine for what these things are designed to do. That means at 200 yards, it's probably going to shoot a group like as big as a dinner plate, right? At 300 yards, it's going to shoot a group about 15 inches, as big as a small beach ball. I can't, by putting the most expensive optic, I can't go buy like this beautiful Steiner, a badass optic, and put it on a 5 MOA gun and expect it to shoot any better than 5 MOA. You know what this is going to do? It's going to help me see that big group better, right? So the optic is only going to help you uh, extract what the gun is capable of plus what you're capable of. So marksmanship is contingent upon multiple things. The gun, right? There's mechanical accuracy, you, uh, the shooter, and then the ammunition. And then environmental factors are constantly changing. So you, the shooter, have to account for that. We could add some more minor things, but that's the big stuff. Optics, when we start talking about magnification now versus that aim point, or the dot in general, is this going to help me shoot farther than eight, 900 yards? Not really, uh, because even though I could see farther away, at that distance, this gun's about out of gas. So the optic is giving us more information downrange. It's helping us see. So eight, 900 yards has to be, for me, really good lighting, really good paint on the steel, uh, there can't be a bunch of different stuff out on the range hiding the steel. It's got to be like plain as day for me to visually see it because I don't have any magnification. Well, when I throw magnification, you know, this is an 8x scope. So that means I'm making it eight times bigger than it would appear without the magnification. So it's giving me more information, but that's not changing the trajectory of the bullet. That's not changing the downrange energy. It's not changing the velocity. It's not changing the ballistic coefficient. It's not changing my mechanics. So back to the point, what am I trying to do with these guns really is how you should decide what to invest in the optic. Let's go back to red dots for a minute. So I'm a big fan of these aim points. I've got friends like my buddy Z, um, he likes the Aimpoint Pro. He deployed uh, to war with one for years as a Green Beret. It's bigger than this, but they're really bulletproof, uh, and he digs it. He's got years seeing it in his line of sight, practicing, drilling, fighting, training. Uh, so that's what he sticks with. Why do I like these? Uh, let's first talk about a more budget optic. And this isn't a dig on any brand. If we're going to talk cost. Uh, we can talk about like this hollow sun. So this is the um, HE403RGR2MOA, blah, 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 blah. None of this is a um, buy this or buy that. This is just some stuff that we've got. So I'm using it to make some comparisons. I've got the hollow sun and I've got a affordable SIG, uh, little SIG dot here. That's the Romeo 5. Are they doing basically the same thing as the aim point? Yeah, basically blah, blah, they blah, are. Blah, blah, blah. None of this is a um, buy this or buy that. This is just some stuff that we've got. So I'm using it to make some comparisons. I've got the hollow sun and I've got a affordable SIG, uh, little SIG dot here. That's the Romeo 5. Are they doing basically the same thing as the aim point? Yeah, basically they are illuminating a dot, a little ball of light that you superimpose on the target. Here's a hollow sun green dot. What I want you to see is how much real estate that dot takes up out there. I'm just moving the optic around a little bit so you can see the target in relationship to that dot. And I've got it at about a medium brightness Look at the quality of the dot and just what it appears like on the target. Let's compare that to an aim point. And now here's the aim point. Dim down, you see a lot of real estate on that target not getting covered up. Why do I like the aim point better? Well, what it does better one, it's a finer, when I say finer, I don't just mean smaller. I mean, it's a clearer ball of light. I don't know how else to say that. Now, things like an astigmatism, uh, vision issues, glasses, 
uh, aberrations in the glass itself, sunlight coming through, all of those things matter. I have found, and I'll have students that are having an issue on the range, I can't see the target or I can't see, I'll give them my gun, not because the gun's better, but I just want them to see, hey, you've been looking through a $200 optic, look through a $700 optic. And again, this isn't a sales pitch, uh, on that because I can hit stuff and this isn't a pat on mix back because marksmanship is marksmanship far away with a $200 dot like you can with that. But what this does is it's a clearer, crisper uh, uh, focusing point that I have found stays true, adjusts better for windage and elevation than some of these. And that's worth it to me to not have to monkey around. Why do we like dots? Well, just like we like dots on a pistol. It's quick, it's easy, right? All of a sudden, everybody's putting dots on pistols. Well, guess what? Back in the 70s, guys like Todd Jarrett, uh, Benny Cooley, right? These dudes were dotting up guns and going to IPSC matches. It's not new. What's new is that we've gotten smaller, 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 more durable, more durable, more durable. And that's something uh, that, that's noteworthy. So we're putting them on our pistols and then we're saying, well, I gotta get specialized training to have dots on my pistol. Really? How many of you have ever had specialized training to use a red dot on a carbine? I know the answer. The answer is none of you. Because you just put it on there, you zeroed it, and it's intuitive to line the thing up. That's a clue. Now, there is some nuances to the pistol, like we have a cheek weld here that doesn't exist on the pistol, but that's another argument or discussion altogether. These are quick, right? They're quick. If something is inside of 100 yards, 100 meters, if I pop this up and I put my dot on there, providing I know my holdover, my zero, it's very easy. It's very intuitive. Versus some type of optic like this where you get congestion with uh, a reticle that maybe has crosshairs, maybe there's various stadia lines for holdover. There can be a bunch of information in there. And make no mistake, all of these optics, all of them are some designer's idea of how to give you and me, the shooter, a better opportunity to not have to think or if we're thinking to get a hit. And what do I mean about not have to think? If you've got holdovers, I can say, okay, I've got some, some stadia marks, some holdovers, and those holdovers are set for XYZ distance, and I think the target's that far away, like this one's got holdovers out to a thousand yards. Well, it's just meant to not think. Well, you still have to know the distance, right? You still have to be able to range out there to know where to hold over. That's another discussion altogether. So simplicity, weight versus more complexity, more things to go wrong, more weight. Let's talk about the LPVOs. I've got these glued to these uh, paint sticks so that I could put them in my tripod so I could get the images that we're going to show you here in the video. This Night Force is a top of the line optic uh, for what it is. It's a, a one to eight. So is it a true one at one? You see some slight distortion, right? I mean, it's amazing when you think about everything that's going on in these that I can magnify an object to look eight times closer, look relatively clear, pretty darn clear, nice glass here. And then when I get rid of all that zoom, for it to be um, perfectly clear and something's up close, like I'm looking at you guys right now, and I mean, it doesn't look like it's magnifying much at all, but what I see is some kind of bend around the edges because we're looking through glass. Now this Steiner, this is also a one. This is a one to six. So not as much magnification, bigger. Uh, a lot more going on with this one uh, as far as size and weight. But what I notice is different. Boy, not, I don't have all of that bend, that aberration, that weirdness on the perimeter of the glass. Does it mean that the Steiner's better? No, it's just a different design and a little more weight they're, they're getting in a little more size. Uh, they're able to work some of those kinks out. Something else you'll notice in the videos uh, that, we shot, that we shoot through these, 
the aiming point. So this is meant for somebody to put on top of their gun, maybe a copper, right? Maybe somebody in a situation where you may have to quickly engage somebody uh, across a, a front yard in a parking lot or zoom out 150, 200 yards and make very good choices. Remember the optic gives us more information out there. Why is that important? Well, if I'm a police officer or I'm a first responder of some sort to violence, I better not hurt the wrong person, right? I better make sure that I'm putting the rounds where they're supposed to be. Remember, we're not using the firearm as a search tool, right? So we better not just be scanning crowds and things, but that's another discussion point altogether. And now here's the Steiner T6XI, one to six by 24. We're at the farthest out setting here of one. We'll take her in, there's one and a half, there's two, there's three, there's four, there's five, and six. What I want you to notice, I'll zoom in a little bit, that reticle is nice and tight. It's not taking up much real estate on that piece of C-zone steel out there, which is important to me. Come back out here and I'm gonna give you a little illumination so you can see what that looks like. There's various settings. And this video is not so much about which scope to buy or how they work. I just want you to see some different features that are meaningful. Let's compare that to the Night Force. And now here we're looking through the Night Force NX8 1 to 8 by 24. We'll zoom her in. There's four power, six power, and eight power. And what I want you to notice, just some focus here, real quick, is how much more real estate that reticle is taking up, covering up the target out there. And of course, the farther away the target goes, the more it's going to be occluded. I'll show you a little bit of the illumination in this reticle. Just focus here, pardon me. There's different brightness settings. Give you a little bit lower. And I'm gonna zoom in so you can see what that looks like out on the target. See that? And you notice how much, again, of the target that big reticle is covering. Just giving you some different brightness settings here. Dimmer, dimmer. Let's go all the way up. That's gonna depend on your vision, ambient lighting, all those things. I can go from my 1X and zoom eight in and have more information. Uh, what happens with this optic though, and this is just food for thought, the reason I'm sharing this, is I am zoomed in, my aiming point that is fairly chunky so that when I'm up close across the distance of a room, I can quickly see my target and see where my aiming point is. It covers a lot of the target up at distance. It's a big thick blob. When I have tried to shoot this at hundreds of yards, it covers my whole target up. So in the trade-off of trying to be good at both, we're not good at either, we're okay. This one's done a better job of solving that problem by putting a ring around the crosshair. So now I've got this kind of bigger ring I can throw around the bad guy. And then if I zoom way in to my six power, boy, there's a really nice aiming point in there. And I've shot this one out hundreds of yards and it's done a much better job. So for me, I took this off of a rifle years ago because for me, it just did not do what I wanted it to do. It covered up too much of the target. This Steiner, while a little bigger, does a much better job. And it's not a sales pitch. They're both great optics, um, but this is the one I would choose if I wanted information. Why am I telling you this? Because if you go out to buy this stuff and you're at Cabela's or Bass Pro or wherever you're shopping, uh, ask if you can glass like across a great distance. Like if you go to Vortex, great people. Uh, Vortex are friends of mine. They help support this build. If you go visit Vortex, you can glass out hundreds of yards across a field that's near their facility in their uh, showroom. 
that's cool. You can see what is that reticle going to look like when I zoom in. You know, if you're looking online or you're watching videos like this and you're trying to see that, it's not going to be the same as what you see when you zoom in on that deer across a field or that coyote or God forbid that bad guy if that's the thing that, that you're called to do. So that's important. When I'm looking at the dots to wrap this conversation up, a couple things. Does that dot look clear to my eye? That's what you want to find because it might look clear to you and not to me. Our eyes are infinitely different. The shape of our eyes as we age, glasses, context, uh, dryness, things like that affect people. Does it look clear to you? And that's what's important. Can you adjust the dimness uh, to something that you find valuable? I've got this hollow sun here and I've noticed this is green. Uh, this hollow sun at low settings, the green is really um, got some big blurs of light that come off of it. And when it gets really bright, boy, it just lights the whole inside of the optic up and like covers up whatever I possibly could see out on the target. And that's just this optic, right? Which is why there's different light uh, or intensity settings. So find what works for you. The goal, right? What do I want out of this? There's like the, is this a Goldilocks thing here? This is just a 22 uh, m and but I put the magnifier on there because people think, well, the magnifier is the end all be all. Well, now we're looking through the SIG Romeo. Fairly inexpensive optic, dimming that dot down. And then we've got this paired with the SIG magnifier. So kind of give you an idea of what this looks like out there. That dot through the magnifier. Let me dim that dot down some if I can. Doing all this, trying to line her up through the camera is not ideal, but we're getting it done. Give you a little view and of course, well, the magnifier is not the end all be all. Magnifiers, this one's a 4X, so I get 1X, 4X. More information, but now I've got a lot more crap on my gun. The uh, mounts are prone to failure. Eye relief can be very tough. I see a lot of people fighting eye relief on these, trying to figure out where your face is supposed to go. Before this video uh, today, I talked to a couple friends, Steve Fisher being one of them, and I just said, hey, what are some things that you see with uh, magnifiers that cause people grief? And same two things I said, mounts and eye relief. Uh, that's important because if you're using this, because you need to take in information out there, and of course, if it breaks or you lose alignment, that's a big, big pain in the butt. It's not going to do what you need. Uh, especially if you've got a job where you actually need it. Missing the deer can be annoying, and then maybe you're not going to feed your family this week, but if you've got a bad guy that needs uh, some attention and your mount is no longer properly aligned, that's a bad day, dudes. Also, if eye relief, you know, even as I'm sitting here playing with this, boy, it's, it's funkadelic trying to find the eye relief. Are they all like that? No, no. But again, when you go to the store and you're looking at these, play around. Ask if you can check them out. If it's going on your gun, you want to make sure that you are going to be able to see through it. Who cares if the guy at the store loves it? Are you going to be able to see what you need to see? Ensure that the mounts that you're using are durable and that they hold uh, zero. Always zero your dot first, then zero your magnifier. I like these setups. I think they're cool. Uh, definitely that additional information from the magnifier is awesome. They're not the end all be all. Uh, so if I had to choose just one, red dot, red dot magnifier, LPVO, what would it be? Here we go. Red dot on a good rifle with a good zero. No rifle and optic is going to be worth a darn without a good zero and you understanding the zero. Why? Why not the uh, LPVO? Why not the magnifier? Well, if I had a more specific thing in mind, maybe I would choose those things.
but for general usage, general purpose, good out to 300 yards easily with just this setup. It's durable as heck. It's easy to take care of. I've got a high quality mount and a setup that I know is going to hold a zero, provided I don't create you know crazy abuse to the gun. So synopsis, find what works for you, but build what works for you around your desired end state. I hope this stuff isn't valuable to you. Uh, I enjoy chatting about it, passing on some of the stuff that we've learned. So in the end, what matters is that you choose what's right for you. Doesn't matter what I choose because it's not my rifle, it's yours. And I think probably the most important thing is this. These rights bestowed on us by our creator to protect ourselves, to protect life and liberty matter. And it matters that we make the right choices uh, in life, especially when it comes down to these things. Do right, seek right, live in a manner that no one would ever question that you did the right thing at the right time. Be well, don't be dickheads. And if you guys are interested in coming out and learning how to use your rifle in a better manner, safer manner, more effective manner, faster, farther, check out carrytrainer.com. It's what we do. Bye. Fairly inexpensive rig. I've got this paired with a 4X magnet. I screw this red dot on here red dots on the well, let me see I think you know what through do you think that we can JB weld that on there and it'll work yeah. or maybe like a I know that when you shoot these guns if we put like a couple popsicle sticks on there and JB weld the whole thing together mm -hmm. if we can figure that out we might be able to sell like the kit to mount them what do you think yeah I've got some duct tape mics here of course we're joking so, nobody has to date yet come up with a good solution to put a red dot onto the 92 platform. That is until...